All right, going to show you a video of this Muslim scholar. His name is uh, it's uh, well his his you know title in Islam would be Sheikh, and then he's uh, Sheikh Uthman. I think that's what his name is. I I can't pronounce his name. I do apologize. Not good at pronouncing foreign names, but he admits that Muhammad, the false prophet of Islam, was illiterate. Okay, watch this. And he goes on to say that, that the Qur'an doesn't have contradictions because it only has one author. That is correct. The only mistake he makes is he says the author is Muhammad, peace be upon him. But that is impossible. I'll tell you why. He couldn't read or write. <laughs> to author a book or to author something, you have to be able to write it. So there you go, right out of the horse's mouth. A Muslim scholar essentially admitting that, yeah, Muhammad couldn't read or write. Which is kind of funny because kind of puts Muhammad at odds with the other men of God in the Holy Torah because they could read and write. And it's not very honorable when you're claiming to be a prophet and you can't even read and write when you don't have the basic education. I mean, even a kindergartner would have had more education than Islam's false prophet Muhammad, Islam's false idolatrous, uh, adulterous false prophet, essentially. You know? And yeah, Islam is idol worship. I'll just get that out there. It is idol worship. You bow down to that little GameCube in Mecca. You know, that big giant GameCube. I wonder if they can insert a big giant games graphic card into that GameCube and play a big big screen game of uh big big screen a version of what's that game called? Super Mario Bros. You know? Because it's a pretty big GameCube, so who knows what they do with that thing. But uh, I'm gonna show you some scriptures showing that the men of God in the Bible were they could read and write, and the Holy Torah, primarily the Old Testament, which is consists of the Holy Torah, but other books of the Old Testament too, because the Holy Torah is the first five books. They could read and write. Okay, Muhammad was illiterate. I mean, he probably didn't pass kindergarten, whatever they have was kindergarten back then. But uh, you got Exodus. So here, here's examples of Moses. He could read and write. Okay, or in Islam they call him Prophet Moses, which you know. He did do some prophesying, but Moses, he was the giver of the law. He could read and write. Let me show you that. Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and re rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, and I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So Moses could was told to write something down and rehearse it, because he have to be able, to, you have to be able to read something before you can rehearse it, because you're reading off what you're rehearsing. So Moses could read and write. God told him, write this down. Another example, uh, Exodus 34 verse 27. You see, unlike Muhammad, Moses was actually not illiterate. Moses was actually pretty intelligent and knew how to read and write. He was he was literate. Uh, Exodus, sorry, Exodus chapter 34 verse 27. I might have said 17. Sorry. Exodus 30, 34 verse 27 uh, where is it here it is and the Lord said unto Moses write thou these words for after the tenor of these words have I made a covenant between thee and with Israel so again God is telling Moses to write down these words so Moses had the uh, capacity to read and write something Muhammad did not uh, did not possess in his uh, mental capacity essentially. Uh, then you got the prophet Jeremiah. He could read and write. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 1 to 2. He also was an intelligent individual too. He could read and write. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 30 verses 1 to 2. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So Jeremiah he had the not enough education and enough intelligence to write down the words God was speaking directly to him. And then of course you got the prophet Habakkuk, who also could read and write, who had the intelligence and the uh, literacy to be able to read and write. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 2. And these are just a few examples, there's plenty of others as well. Um, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse number 2 And the Lord answered me and said Write the vision and make it plain upon tables And he may, be able, he may run That readeth it <laughs> Readeth Again Muhammad could not read and write But here Habakkuk is saying Write it and make it able to be read as well So God expected others to be able to read it So 
it's not very honorable that your your so called your so called prophet who is into idol worship and polygamy and all this other weird stuff, uh, he couldn't even read and write. But yeah, that's somehow a good thing almost. Because in the video he's basically refuting Steven Anderson, which I'm not a Steven Anderson follower. I used to be a Steven Anderson follower, but I left his new IFB cult I'd say about two years ago and you know, haven't looked back since then, but uh, Stephen Anderson is a false prophet. He uh, is not a Christian. So I've done videos exposing Stephen Anderson. Not going to get too much into that, but basically Stephen Anderson preaches a gospel of a false gospel of no repentance, no conviction of sin. There's no godly sorrow over sin. Just you believe and that's it. Um, there is repentance. Not going to get too much into that. I've covered that in other videos. But yeah, I'm not a Stephen Anderson follower. But you know, saying that Muhammad, oh, he was a liter. He couldn't read and write, but that's somehow proof that. The Quran having one author somehow makes it true. It, it, it was just a weird thing he was trying to say. But just more proof out of their own mouth that Muhammad was illiterate. He was uneducated. So don't be deceived by Islam. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.